Well, first of all, good morning. How good are morning. You? I'm great. I'm great. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Doing fine. Well, as you can imagine, this is this whole evolution in how we produce power is something that we have been studying very, very intensively at DTE. And some of that was pushed by what you mentioned earlier is uh, us thinking that we were going to need to uh, comply with the Clean Power Plan. And so in uh, what's not now the case, Clean Power Plans can be set aside, but uh, a lot of our work and study was, was driven by trying to understand what the future would look like. So here's here's what I've come to. Um, First of all, I'm dealing with an economic reality, and that is that the coal-fired plants, which have served our state really well for a long time, uh, were in large part built in the 1950s, and we're beginning to run into a reality that continuing to invest in and maintain those is becoming more and more tenuous. Some of those are 65 years old, headed on 70, and we're, we're running into the aging car syndrome. So when we announced last year that we would retire 11 units at three plant sites, these are all older plants that were built in that time frame. And when you look at what it makes sense to replace those with, uh, both natural gas, which is and now abundant in the U.S., and renewables have sharply better uh, cost profiles than they did, say, a half dozen years ago. Mm -hmm. And so what we uh, said in our press release is that we will be backfilling these retirements with uh, natural gas and with renewables. When you project forward, uh, the, the other coal plants that we have are going to eventually uh, run right into this to the same age dynamics. And so what I talked about isn't esoteric. It's really just taking stock in a careful economic and engineering analysis of where we are going as a company and what that's going to mean and what it's going to mean uh, for emissions of all ki kinds, including carbon. Yeah, I, well, I get the I get the part about the, uh, you know, the cost effectiveness of, of uh, what you have to do looking forward with the uh, the coal plants going by the wayside. But uh, when when you say climate change is a big deal, Jerry, that that suggests that that your company and others like yours have been responsible for changing the climate and damaging the, the planet. And I don't believe that. That's I've told Alan Mulally that once and, and he looked at me sideways. But I, I, I just don't believe DTE has ruined the climate. I think it's the same no matter what. Well, so look, I'm not a climate scientist. So I'll, I'll start by saying that. I have, on the other hand, given my position, studied the issue uh, very carefully, as carefully as I can, uh, and have educated myself. And I have come to a view that this is an issue that, that we ought to take on. And the, the interesting thing is there was a time when that looked untenable economically, uh, back when natural gas prices were very, very high and gas was in short supply and renewable energy uh, had much the same description. Um, so, you know, a half dozen years ago, I would have said, uh, this looks like a really difficult mix, but a lot has changed. And so I've come to the view that there really isn't a sucker's choice, so to call, between this move on the environment and the health and competitiveness of our economy. So I if you, we, if I you, we can do both. Okay, so if you cut emissions by 80% of DTE, because you've studied this now uh, closely, how, how, how much are you going to lower temperatures? What difference is it going to make to the climate of the earth or to the United States or Michigan? Depends a lot on what the rest of the world does, obviously. And in in uh, talking about this, I really rely on work that's been done by other scientists. So they've kind of focused in on this 80% as a marker. And, you know, we, we can do that, but it will take uh, a whole lot of people acting for it to be meaningful. So we understand that this is not something that DT Energy takes on by itself. Yeah. See, I've, I've done the same thing. I've done a lot of research on this as well and talked to, to scientists in the industry. And uh, and, and I'm convinced that the, the data has been skewed on us and uh, and that there's uh, there's nothing to worry about. And uh, that's, I don't know, that's, that's just where I come from. I don't have to run a big utility like you do, though. You, you're in a little <laughs> different spot than I am. I just get to talk about it on the radio, you know. Well, that's all right. You know, one of the, one of the, if if you come at it from your your viewpoint, which is, I'm not sure I do back handsprings to deal with this, which I understand, and and you know that's a it's an honest viewpoint. Uh, I, I've told you mine that I have come to the conclusion we ought to address this, but 
leave those two viewpoints aside, if you just look at the math of what's coming for us, the math is that we are going to phase out coal due to age, and we're going to replace it with resources that are much, much lower emitting. So natural gas, because of its chemical composition and the efficiency of the plants, has 30% of the CO2 that coal does. So even if you did a one-for-one one there, uh, it's a 70% difference. And, you know, when you begin to mix in renewables, which I, I think we will as they continue to come down the cost curve. Now, you can't build an economy on renewables only. Uh, that's certain. But you, they, they can certainly be a healthy part of the mix. And, you know, you put the two together and say, if that's what we're going to replace coal with as, as it ages out, you, you come to the, to the same conclusion that I have. So you can come at it in a number of different ways. But I really think we're going we're gonna to end up uh, where we've pointed, uh, regardless of philosophy, so to speak. Well, uh, to be continued, I just know without that CO2, that beautiful new park you're building is not going <laughs> to have great plants. So <laughs> I'll talk to you soon, Jerry. Thanks for the time, my friend. Appreciate it. Always good. Same here.